This guide is made for Super Smash Bros. Melee on PC, but most of the things can be applied on the console version of Super Smash Bros. Melee on the Nintendo GameCube. Timestamps are in the description if you want to skip around. Go into Google and type in Slippy and click the first link, or you could type in slippy.gg in the URL above. Click Download for Windows. Right click your download and click Open when done. Then press Next and save the application to wherever. Now here, if you want to use a GameCube controller, then you should install the drivers. If you are using any other controller, then click only install Slippy Launcher. It's gonna show this command prompt window. You just wait. And it's done installing, you press finish. Then create your account clicking here. A side note is you can change your display name as many times as you want. Accept the rules and policies. Keep in mind this connect code is permanent and the only way to change it is to pay money. Once you've decided on your connect code tag, press continue. Now you need a Melee ISO. This is a digital copy of the game disc. To get one, you can ask your friends on how to get one. Uh, if you have no friends, then uh, well, you could join your local Smash Bros. Melee Discord in your area. I get, <laughs> I can't give you this information. Congrats, you got your ISO, you drag it to the window. And there you go, you could start playing the game now. Woo! Turn down your speaker audio before you press play, by the way, because it starts really loud. Me! Also, you might get a firewall protection pop-up. Just make sure if you want to play online that you click allow access. And to close the game, just press escape on your keyboard. You can use any controller you like, from GameCube controller to Xbox controller, or keyboard to name a few. By the way, keyboard is really good. You just gotta look up a layout for it. Now, how to add your controllers. So click the settings gear wheel here. Set the play button action to launch dolphin. Now press the green button play, and then there's a controllers tab. Click that. If you're using a non-GameCube controller, change port one to standard controller. Then click configure. So here I'm gonna use my Xbox controller as an example and it's not showing up. Sometimes it does that, just close down everything and reopen. And now my Xbox controller showed up as X input and set the controls to however you like. Left click the button with your mouse and then press a button on your controller. Now, if your controller supports analog triggers, then you should use them, which means having a soft trigger press and a hard trigger press. It doesn't give that much of an advantage, but if your controller has analog triggers, then you might as well add them to your controls. Later in the guide, I'll go into why analog triggers are good. You'll see some options such as ranked, unranked, and direct. Direct is to connect to your friends. Press start and type out your friend's connect code and both should queue up and match each other. And if you play ranked, here are the ranking milestones. Bronze 3 is better than Bronze 1. On the Slippy website on the left, if you click leaderboards, you will see the top players. And on the top right, you could click view profile to see your own rank. If you want to see your friends ranking, go to the URL slippy.gg slash user slash and type your friends connect code. For example, my code is sub number sign 645. So in the URL, I would put sub hyphen 645. To play your friends in person on your PC setup, go to versus mode, then melee. If you want to move around by yourself and test your buttons and do some training, go to training mode here. The Smash Bros series does not have a health bar like traditional fighting games. Each player has four stocks. If you go out of bounds, you lose a stock. And when your opponent hits you, your damage percentage increases. The higher the number, the further you get knocked back. Tilt left or right to walk. Quickly tap left or right and hold it to run. To jump, press up on the analog stick or press X or Y. If you release your jump button fast, you will do a short hop. Holding your jump button will do a full hop. Short hopping is harder on certain characters. Jump while in the air to do a double jump. To refresh your double jump, you either have to land on stage or grab the ledge. Most stages have platforms. You can tap down to go through them, or while in the air, just hold down. Pressing A is your standard attacks. There are four versions, tilting up and pressing A, tilting forward and pressing A, 
tilting down and pressing A, and then there's neutral A. The terminology online you may see for these attacks are up tilt, down tilt, F tilt, and jab. If you press A during your run, you will do a dash attack. Smash attacks. These attacks are heavy hitters that will knock back opponents far. Tap the C stick in any cardinal direction to do up smash, down smash, or forward smash. Aerial attacks. By pressing A in the air while holding a direction, you can do five different air attacks. You can also use the C stick in the air too. Up air, forward air, down air, back air, which is the direction your back is facing, and neutral air. Special moves. These moves have special properties. An example is some shoot a projectile. Neutral B, down B, side B, and up B. Press Z to grab. Once the opponent is grabbed, you can throw them by tapping up, forward, down, or back. You can get some damage on your opponent while grabbed by pressing A. If you get grabbed, to escape, you must mash any button. The best method is to roll your stick in a circle. The higher your percent, the harder it is to escape a grab. Hold L or R to shield. Shield protects you from attacks. Over time, it shrinks. Shield is countered by grabs. The smaller the shield, the more vulnerable you are. Tilt your analog stick while shielding to block attacks from certain directions. While holding shield, you can do four things. Flick right or left to roll. Flick down to sidestep. Press jump to jump out of shield. And pressing A while shielding does a shield grab. If you shield in the air, you do an air dodge. You can also air dodge in any direction. When you are off stage, you have two tools that can help you to recover back on stage. You can use your double jump, and you could press up B to get back to the stage. Make sure to use your double jump before you up B, because when you will use your up B, you get put into special fall. Air dodging also puts you into special fall. In special fall, you cannot do anything until you land back on the ground or on the ledge. Ledge mechanics. You need to face the ledge to grab it. Once you grab the ledge, you blink white. This lasts half a second. You cannot get hit during this time. When you're on ledge, you have multiple options. Normal get up, jump, attack, and roll. When you're above 100%, you do the slower, more vulnerable ledge versions. Also, only one person can hold the ledge at a time. When you get hit by an attack, you enter hit stun. In hit stun, you cannot do anything. The duration of hit stun you're in depends on a lot of factors, but a big factor is percentage. If you hit your opponent while they are in hit stun, you can keep juggling them. If you hit the ground while in hit stun, you get put into a grounded state. When you are lying on the ground, you have four options from here. Tap left or right to roll, tap up for normal wake up, or press A for get up attack. Break fall or tech. You can avoid being grounded in the first place by doing a break fall, also called floor tech. Press L or R right before you hit the ground. If done successfully, you immediately get up without lying on the ground. You can break fall in three directions. The same time you press L or R to tech, you hold the analog stick left or right or neutral. The terminology you will find online is called tech roll and tech in place, and mistech for being grounded. Melee terminology is all over the place. Anyway, get used to the basics, play your friends that are also new to the game, or join this Discord, link in the description, to find people that are also brand new to the game. Then once you get comfortable with the basics, continue with the video. Tap down at the peak of your jump or later to fall faster. Dash dancing. This technique can be used to space yourself from opponents or to remain unpredictable. Tap left then right in a slow rhythm or a fast rhythm and any amount in between to do them. If you encounter this turnaround animation, you are too slow. This happens because you are in the run state. You can only dash dance in the dash state. Run state begins after the dash state around once Falcon takes his steps. But every character is different, uh, different timings of dash amounts. If you do mess up your dash dancing and you go into the run animation, you could escape it by crouching from the run, shielding from the run, or jumping from the run. 
wave dashing. Air dodge in a diagonal direction right after you jump. It can be used to land on platforms faster and each character has different timings. Also this training mode is called the Uncle Punch Training Pack. This is the wave dash training event. Smooth landing or also called L canceling is a technique to allow you to move faster or be actionable faster after an aerial attack. So just press L or R or Z around a quarter second before you land the ground. There is a Uncle Punch event that allows you to diagnose how to do it successfully here. Or to see if you're failing your L cancels during actual games, you could enable this gecko code here. And now that you learned how to L cancel, you can finally do the short hop fast fall L cancel aerials or the shuffle for short. This allows you to chain air attacks as fast as possible. Make sure to break it down if you're having trouble with practicing this. Make sure you do the short hop first and then we get comfortable with short hopping, adding attack, and then once you add the attack, add fast falling and so on and so forth. Take one step at a time and then you'll soon master it. Jump cancel grab allows you to do a standing grab out of a dash or run. A standing grab finishes faster so you can act faster. Most of the time you want to do a standing grab out of a dash slash run. To jump cancel grab just press jump and Z at the same time but try to press jump slightly before Z. Edge canceling landing an air attack on an edge of a platform or a ledge cuts your landing lag entirely. The more air speed you have, the easier it is to edge cancel. Reverse hits. If you hit your opponent on the opposite side of a move, they get launched the opposite way. This is good for mixing up people's directional influence. I talk about this later in the video. Ledge hog rolling. So we know only one person can hold the ledge, but we can actually hold the ledge while being fully invincible. Rolling from the ledge makes you invincible and still occupies the ledge at the same time. If you try to ledge hog someone without being invincible, they could just hit you off and then grab the ledge. That's why you roll from ledge so you don't get hit because you're invincible and you occupy the ledge at the same time. This is the best ledge option but the hardest to execute. You get invincibility and can wave dash onto the stage. Tap away from the ledge and use your double jump, then air dodge back onto the stage. Your goal is to get the most actionable and tangibility. So every character is different. So in this example, the most I can get on Dr. Mario is 14 frames. Keep in mind, getting max frames per character is actually really hard. One of the hardest technical things to do. But as long as you get at least one frame, that's really good for a new player in my opinion. Earlier we talked about teching the floor, but you could actually tech the wall and ceiling. If you have analog triggers set, like in the beginning of the video when I was talking about controllers, you are able to do light shields. It gets closer to a hard shield the further you press down on L or R. Light shields make your shield bigger and you get pushed back further. Shield dropping. On platforms, you can drop through them while shielding, a very advantageous position because of how fast you can counterattack right after shielding. While shielding, hold left or right, then tap down while touching the sides of the gate. It would be like doing a quarter circle input on your analog stick. Crouch canceling. It allows you to tank more percentage before getting knocked down. Crouch canceling lowers the percentage threshold of getting knocked down by a lot. Without crouch cancel, for example, Falco gets knocked down by Sheik's F-Tilt at 25%. With crouch canceling though, Falco does get knocked down by the forward tilt all the way up to 81%. Directional influence. It allows you to live longer and escape combos. If you hold in, you can survive. Here's an example of Kirby doing forward smash to Zelda killing at 112%. But if Zelda holds DI in, then she lives. But here's the thing, holding DI in the whole time is bad because it allows you to get comboed more intensely. In this example, Bowser is DIing in, but to escape the combo, he should DI out. Long story short, to get out of combos, DI out, and to survive killing hits, DI in. But which direction do you hold your analog stick for DI in or DI out? Well, it's relative to the attack that you're trying to defend against. So the natural launch direction of Kirby's forward smash is this blue line. If you want to DI in, you hold perpendicular in towards Kirby. And if you want to DI out, you hold perpendicular out uh, away from Kirby. But every situation is different. 
So every move has its own knockback and every stage and where you got hit on the stage is also different every game. So it really depends. I'm using a INeedData.com website. It's a tool to help visualize certain situations in the game. So in this tool, I emulated a fox doing an up smash on another fox right here. And the opponent fox is at 89%. So fox in the center of the stage gets up smashed at 89% with no directional influence would die here. And my cursor in this example acts like my control stick. So if I start holding more perpendicular right, you see that I will not be out of bounds anymore and I will live the fox up smash. I hope that all made sense to you. Um, it's a little complicated. <laughs> it's a little complicated, so. But it adds to how the game is very deep because every situation is different and that will change whether you want to be put in situations where you should DI in to get put in that situation or you should DI out to get put into a situation that you want. All these advanced techniques are actually not all of them in the game. I only talked about the really important ones, but if you want to know the more mini school ones or the ones that are like more flashy and just for swag, uh, watch this video video by third chair really good all right now if you've been doing research on this game you'll probably hear stuff about neutral and punish game and edge guarding and a quick explanation of those three is that neutral game is you and your opponent are trying to get the first hit off and then punish game is capitalizing on that first hit trying to get as much damage percentage on your enemy as possible so you could get them off stage and edge guarding is you have a big advantage since your opponent is off stage and you are on stage and you're trying to close off the stock and ko them thanks boat full of semen for <laughs> supporting our patreon okay i need to finish this guide <laughs> i spent like 30 hours already so i'm just gonna finish it and yeah this game's freaking hard man probably one of the hardest competitive games out there Especially since there's those damn goblins that have been playing this game since 2001. Holy crap. But, I promise you guys, once you're able to move around freely in this game, there is nothing like it. And you'll never stop playing this game like me, I guess. <laughs> it's like, to me, it's like skateboarding. You could just make up combos and make up tricks and move around in the game and be creative. But you're also playing a deep fighting game at the same time, improving with you, yourself and your friends and stuff. Yeah, it's, oh my god, this game's great. Anyway... My rant's done. Thanks so much for watching and playing this game we all love.